Good morning. It's Thursday, December 10th, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, View from the Watching Tower, and our scripture is Habakkuk, chapter 2. I will climb up to my watchtower and stand at my guard post. There I will wait to see what the Lord says and how he will answer my complaint. Then the Lord said to me, Write my answer plainly on tablets, so that a runner can carry the correct message to others. This vision is for a future time. It describes the end, and it will be fulfilled. If it seems slow in coming, wait patiently, for it will surely take place. It will not be delayed. God tells the prophet to write everything down, and then make sure others get to read or hear it. That describes a preacher's job in full, getting the message of God to everyone with ears. In this missive, God wants a clear, straightforward communication of his message. Write plainly what you hear, Habakkuk, then spread the news around. While God wants the prophet to be clear about stating the message, the Lord also sets the effect of the message for a future time. And then God utters in Habakkuk's ears the one word no ten-year-old boy ever wants to hear, wait. We all do a good bit of waiting. I waited in line in the drive-up lane at the bank because that branch is outside only. I'm waiting on a prescription to be refilled right now because the pharmacy system got overwhelmed. We're all waiting for the pandemic to appear in the rearview mirror. We wait, and God says, Wait patiently. As if waiting isn't enough, we are to be patient too. So that brings us to Advent, a planned season of waiting. We get to burn one candle at a time with a week in between increasing the light and the warmth. I admit I'm not a good waiter. The last thing I want to do when I boot up my computer each morning is wait for the sign-on page. I want to turn it on and get going. I've got deadlines, tasks to accomplish, people to call, another report to file for the paper monsters at conference. Who wants to sit and wait? And God said, if it seems slow in coming, be patient. Hang in with me. It will surely happen. Now, I have no doubts about God's motives, plans, and ways being much higher than my pay grade, but that somehow doesn't make me a patient waiter. I couldn't be patient for that driver's license when I was 16 so I could have the freedom of driving without a chaperone, or graduation day so I could get out on my own, or for that first child to get here, or that pastor search committee to make up its mind. Waiting, in my world, ain't pretty. And God said, be patient. And he gave us Advent to savor the waiting time. Frankly, waiting for the future to get here is part of the ride. On a longish trip, I always want to keep track of how long I've got to go before I get there. The GPS on my phone keeps track for me, and I look at the ETA, the estimated time of arrival, as if to make sure I don't get there too late. That's not patience. It's the opposite. It's anxiety produced by impatience. Instead of enjoying the scenery on the trip, I managed to transform a time of waiting into a time of personal torture. The answered questions of life about why some babies die or why typhoons, tsunamis, and mudslides take out thousands of homes and people or why God doesn't do something about injustice and oppression, all these are tied to Advent and waiting on the Lord's definition of the fullness of time. For you today, the Apostle Paul reminds us that some things are worth waiting for. Galatians chapter 4, But when the right time came, God sent his Son. So, Habakkuk, What are you waiting for? Go spread that news plainly. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.